Before we get started on today's video, we wanted to let you know that we're on our way to 800,000 subscribers and we've noticed that a huge percentage of you guys that watch our videos every week are not subscribed to our channel. It only takes seconds out of your day to press that subscribe button, especially if you enjoy this content. We launch videos every week so you can get notified every time there's a new one. Thanks for all your support. We hope you enjoy the video. Watch how we take this and turn it into a beautiful accent wall resembling natural concrete. This is something you can do in your home, business, or any vertical surface. We will show you what we did step by step to achieve this look. It's a DIY friendly process and you can learn from the pros themselves. Find a link in the description below to get the supplies you need to get started. So we're gonna show you the installation of our wall kit. The first thing you wanna do is you wanna make sure you tape off everything that you don't want coated. That's the key to remember, is the concrete overlay and our primer will stick to just about everything and it's not coming off. So we need to make sure that we tape off everything. Now, what we wanna do is we wanna kind of turn this side of the wall into more of an accent wall and we'll follow the design of the ground. So the goal is that we'll make a concrete looking wall right here and come in at kind of a 45 degree angle, maybe a little bit less, and just transition over into the standard paint. So the first thing we want to do is just to show you, obviously you're going to take plates off, but we're going to take painter's tape, and because this is new trim, we just want to stay away from the trim. So we're probably just going to take, uh, take the trim off. Now, if you can, take the trim off. That's going to make it much easier. So the first thing I want to do, is just make sure that I tape right on that trim. That'll give us something, that'll give us something to tape our plastic to. And you just wanna outline the whole area that you're going to be coating. So we don't wanna coat onto this wall, so we actually need to tape off this wall as well. Let me show you. So instead of taping right in the corner, like most people think you wanna do, we're gonna stay about an eighth of an inch, maybe a little bit more, off of the corner. So this is the corner, but we're actually gonna bring it onto this wall a little bit, give ourselves a little bit of room because the, o the overlay actually has some build to it. So we're gonna tape off the entire perimeter and we're going to do the same thing on the ceiling. Now, let me show you how we're gonna tape this wall off. inside edge so so we want to make sure that inside edge is a nice crisp clean line like that and then what we'll do is we'll actually split this tape in the middle because we, we know that our line's straight and we'll bend this in. Now, there's a couple different ways you can go. You can either bend it in like we're doing or right at this point, you can go straight back. We like this. We think we're just gonna keep it like this. And even around this window, we're gonna do the same thing we're doing on the corner of the wall. We're, we need to tape this off, so we're just gonna tape it high. Because again, the, the overlay is a buildable product, so we're just gonna tape this a little bit high. So we're gonna tape the whole perimeter of the area, and then we're gonna put plastic down, coming out about five or six feet, and we're even gonna tape that wall off a little bit as well. Okay, so the next step is we're gonna use our prep replacement primer. We're gonna prime the wall because that's gonna get our bond with the overlay to the painted wall. Um, obviously, we've taped everything off. We got plastic down. Notice how we put the plastic really far out because we're gonna get a lot of drips. This is a dip and roll process, super simple. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just cut in all my edges because obviously the roller's not gonna get in the corners. And also, this the, the primer's gonna help seal that edge of the tape. So it kind of does two things for us. It, it gives us the bond and it seals up that tape in. So I just got a, a, a cheap paintbrush, dip it in there, and then I'm just gonna hit all these edges real quick. And this is a, it's white, 
but it dries clear. So obviously going over a white wall, it's hard to tell where I've hit. So I want to make sure I overlap everything, brush it in really good. And this stuff, stuff will be dry in about a half an hour. You really want to make sure your, your tape is pushed out extremely well, especially this inside edge. Really rub that down because the most walls are textured. I'm just going to hit all this that way. I don't have to try to get a brush in here or the roller. Quickly brush this bottom edge. Some of this trim isn't pushed up to the wall all the way, so we might have some touch up down here when we're done. Okay, so since I got a fresh roller, I'm just gonna take a second and get it nice and soaked up. And this is made to go on thin, so we really want to roll this out good. I'm going to start in the middle after I dip every time. It's kind of like your, kind of like your paint, real simple. We just don't want to rise, we don't want it thick. So I'm really going to roll this out good. Notice how we have two strips of tape up top. That's because the roller is close to the width of one strip of tape and we don't want to get any on the ceiling. So I'll get it rolled out and I'll just keep rolling it to make sure it's thin. Try not to hit that water head. So one dip got this one, two. So I got three, three roller widths with one dip. So I'll try to keep that going. Again, start in the middle, work up and down. Since I'm getting three roller widths, I'm gonna just roll out in the middle about three roller widths and then I'll just go top to bottom. I and mean, it's always good to just kind of step back, look at different angles, make sure we're not running anywhere, make sure we don't have any drips. And we'll just continue that process. And I'm using a 3 8 snap roller. Puts it out at a good, good thickness. So I got straight lines, I don't, I'm not going all random directions, I'm going straight up, straight down. Rolling every spot a couple times, making sure we're getting that primer and all the texture that's on the wall. But since this cuts off, I should have enough to finish this out.
So now we'll just let this sit for about a half hour, 45 minutes. If you can get some air flowing on this, it'll dry in 20, 25 minutes. So if you can, throw some air on it. It's gonna dry quick, but we'll probably wait about a half an hour and then we'll do our first coat. All right, so it's been about a half an hour. We want the wall tacky. We don't want it all the way dry. If you wait too long, it's not gonna to wanna to stick. So we're going on it while it's tacky. The whole, the whole trick here is to try to minimize splashing this stuff around. Obviously it's gonna be dripping all over here. That's why we have plastic. I don't wanna roll this too fast where it flings it up on the ceiling. Um, and I'm gonna, we wanna start from the top. He'll work it down. And then we'll come here, do that. Maybe move over there. We don't, wanna, we don't wanna have him pull it all the way to the floor and just knock off all the material on the floor and waste it. So we'll kind of see how we do it. Again, this is pretty messy. So all I'm trying to do is get the product up there for him. And you guys can see why we have so much stuff plastic off, right? It gets everywhere. So I'm just kind of moving slow, dipping and throwing it right up there. And then he'll be able to knock that down. And just kind of push him up there in the corner. And we can always go back and touch some spots up. Any, any dry spots on the hip for him. And this is why plastic so much stuff off. So he'll start kind of working that down from the top. All, all he's trying to do is flatten it off nice and light. And if I need to get some up there more, I'll just get it some more up there. back and if there's mist spots we can take a brush brush in any mist spots on the top corner so all we're trying to do is just flatten this off and the next coat is going to cover a lot better because we're not going to be going on a sealed surface So we obviously have some thick melt plastic. We don't want to use painter's plastic on the floor and get tears in it. This is really thick, it's not gonna tear on us. And if he needs stuff anywhere, like right here, I'll just give him a little material. He can flatten it off. Need some up there. Again, I'm not as concerned about these tops. If we can come back and we can we can hit those with the roller again, flatten them off, or just a paint brush. First coat's always the hardest because we're going over a sealed surface. Once this dries, we're gonna have a porous surface that's gonna wanna soak up the material. It's gonna stick better, it's gonna lay out better. So this, this next coat will be a lot easier to apply. We won't get a lot of these tear and scratch marks that we do. So I'm gonna spot hit any of these bare spots real quick. You obviously don't want to get too far along and then come back. It's still kind of wet. You can hit it while it's still wet. So I'll just get a little material in the spot. And then when we flatten this off, 
You never want to just start because it's going to leave a line. You want to try to feather into it. Right? Just feather into it or start on an edge and come down. And we have some drips here. We want to hit those off. We got some drips up there. Again, we don't want to just start in the middle because it's going to leave a line. Where all we're doing now is just going around and touching stuff up. And all these tear marks, it's the crushed marble and the mix sliding on the sealed surface. That's why we're getting these. The next coat, we're not going to get those. So it's going to cover a lot better. You're always going to get those on your first coat. Okay, you can see how it's just getting a little product there, flattening it off. Again, guys, this is the first coat. It's always gonna have these marks in it, the tears, the scratches, because we're going over a sealed surface. So, this next coat, and this, this, this will dry in about an hour, hour and a half. We're gonna put a floor fan on it. It's gonna dry it a lot quicker, but typically you wanna give it, give it a couple of hours to make sure it's nice and dry, and then we'll show you guys the next coat. All right, now that this is dry, we're gonna run a, a metal scraper and we're just gonna knock down any uh, little chunks that are sticking out. It's kind of rough when you feel it. Obviously, you guys can't feel it, but just scraping it really quick makes it a lot flatter. So that's all we're gonna do right now. You can tell I'm applying a lot of pressure. It's not scraping it off or nothing. It's just knocking down any little chunks that are sticking out. So I'll just get the majority of the wall with the big one. And I'll take a smaller one and get in these little small tight areas. When I'm going on the tape, I don't want to press so hard and then knock the tape off there, so I'm going light when I get to that bottom edge. And if you want, you can scrape these. You just want to be real careful. And then if you guys have like thick spots that you missed or runs or something that, that the scraper's not knocking it down, just take some 80 grit sandpaper and just sand those flat. All we're trying to do is get everything flat, nothing sticking up, no drips really. Uh, and then we'll be able to do our next coat. All right, so before we do the next coat, now we have a porous surface. It's gonna wanna soak the moisture out. Before we just had a sealed prime surface. That's why we got all these scratch marks, stuff like that. We're not gonna get that on this coat, but we gotta really make sure we hydrate it because we don't want this stuff setting up on us too quick. So I'm just gonna lightly mist the whole wall, let it soak in for a second, and then start again. It takes a minute for it to soak in, so I don't wanna spray too much in one spot. Obviously you can see where the mist spots are, so I'm just gonna spot hit everything else. Try not to spray 
the spots that look wet. So when I'm spraying, I'm just looking for dry spots. And I don't want to spray so much that we got, it's really wet, it starts to drip, because that'll thin out our overlay. So it's better to just take your time, spray a couple different times, because we're looking for the whole surface to be like this. It's wet, but it's not dripping wet. So that's gonna make it a lot easier to coat with this next coat if everything's saturated like that spot. And if you get it too wet, it's running everywhere and dripping water, just let it soak in or get a rag and just wipe that excess off. So as I'm going, I'm probably gonna have to rehydrate some spots because by the time I get to here, say, right, it's gonna already start to dry out, so I'll have to re-spray. So I just wanna be cautious of that. I don't wanna go on a dry overlay or it's gonna soak it out and make this stuff set up a lot quicker. So same as last time, we're just dipping it and we're going straight up on the wall. Right, we're gonna start from the top and kind of work our way down. So I wanna get a little bit coated and then I'm just gonna flatten it off. And then we're gonna take the trowel just like last time. We're just gonna flatten it off. Notice how it's not doing those hair marks. We can apply a little more pressure if you have a porous surface we're going on. And if you come close, notice how it's like all random and uneven looking. That's what we want. We don't want this to be perfectly, you know, perfect. Like we got some thinner spots. That's going to give us some really cool looks after we do our scratch coat. Now before I move on, I just want to make sure everything's flattened off, and again guys, I'm not worried about these spots that are missed. If you want to try to get a perfectly flat wall, we would just add a little material here and flatten it off, but it's going to look better the more random it is. So I'm literally just going all different directions. So now we'll do the same exact thing, start on the top and work our way down. And notice how my wall is still hydrated. Probably about after this next section I do, I want to hydrate again. You really don't want to do sections wider than this because you don't want it to start setting up. So we're doing a couple of feet at a time, top to bottom, and then we move off.
And again, we never want to start and then go, right? We got a, we got a flat line there. So I'm always coming in and feathering off to the last section of it. So the biggest thing on this coat is making it random. We don't want to have lines going up and down. We want to make sure I'm moving the texture all over the place. I'm going to come up, come down, everything. And if I ever start out in the middle, I kind of feather it in. I'll clean up to make sure nothing's on the squeegee, and I'll come in slow, feather it in. So yeah, biggest thing is don't try to do too big of a section or this is gonna set up and you're gonna have like two layers right there because you're going over a dry spot. So I'm not worried about leaving lines when I'm flattening it off. It's when I go back to finish it. All I'm doing here is trying to get all that top fit. So now that I got everything flattened off, I'm gonna do my random, random passes on it. This is the stuff I'm talking about. I can add more product there to get it nice and flat like all right here, but it's gonna look cool if we have some patches throughout it that are gonna be different. So I'm just gonna make sure I don't have any runs, big spots. If you have spots on your edges that you need to hit, you just get a paintbrush, ladder, and you just kind of brush it in. But it always pretty good, so we'll let this dry and we'll show you the next steps. All right, so we're getting ready to sand the wall. It's, it's literally rock hard. It's really rough because of the aggregate. So we want to knock that flat. That way when we do our scratch coat, it makes it, it fills in all these low spots. So I've sanded this spot there real quick. You guys can't really tell because you can't feel it. But what I have here, it's a drywall sander for walls. Works great for our overlay kits. It was like, I want to say, this is 139 bucks on Amazon. Comes with everything here. Even the sanding pads, I'm using 80 grit. And it collects like 98% of the dust too. So really simple, it sands really fast. So I'm gonna sand the wall with this and you guys will see how easy it is.
can see how we still have a really rough texture here versus over here where I sand it. Yeah, so it basically knocks all these little peaks off from the, the crushed marble in there. And this is gonna give a nice profile for our metal trowel to run on the tops of all those, filling in all these low spots. So I'll finish sanding this. It's cool because it's got a variable speed here. I'm on max and it's got a lock trigger, so I'll lock this in so it's on and then I can get up taller. So I kind of hit it both ways, went left to right, up, up and down, um, and then I just run my hand just to make sure nothing's really sticking out, it's all flattened off, and that's all we're looking for. Alright, so what I'm doing is I'm hitting the corners, the top edge, obviously the, the machine's not going to get right to these edges, I'm just taking an 80 grit palm sanding pad and just kind of barely hitting it. It doesn't take much to just flatten that off. And then same thing with on these corners, we want to round these off, sand these all flat. And if you have a lot of edges, just grab a palm sander, hook it up to a vacuum, and you can hit them up. We don't have very many spots we gotta hit. Just remember, the, not, the, the flatter you can get it by sanding, the better you do sanding, the flatter your wall will be. So I'll finish this out and we'll show you guys the scratch belt. Okay, so first things first, now again, we have that porous surface, we really gotta hydrate it. So we're gonna do the same thing as we did before our second texture coat. We're just gonna mist the wall. Again, we don't wanna spray too much in one spot and then we'll come back and spot hit in the dry spots. So if you wanted, the cool thing about this process is you can leave it at this step and just put our, our top coat on it and this could be it. If you want it more smooth, you're gonna do the step we're gonna do right now, which is gonna fill in and make it a, a lot flatter. But this is an awesome look, just by itself. Basically, the whole wall is, wall is the same color, so now we can start, and again, the biggest thing is not going onto a dry surface, so again, I'll be, I'll be hydrating as I, as I go down this wall. So we're gonna do the, the roller tray for this. This doesn't have any aggregate in it. So it's like a paste. And we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna start at the top and work our way down. Again, we're flattening this off, so I don't want thick spots or it's just gonna drip off, so try to roll that out a little bit. And then we'll take our metal trowel and we're gonna just scrape it tight. Again, it's a lot, it's a lot easier if you have someone putting this up and then one guy just focus on 
flattening it off. So I want to push, kind of push that up top. That way when I pull down, it fills in as I'm pulling down. pretty much what we're looking for. So it kind of flattens everything off, and then I'm going to hydrate it in to make it easier to work with. So I'll hydrate right on that edge a little. The water's going to make it a lot easier to work with. on this edge, go all the way down, maybe, maybe two roller widths, and that's how I do it, that way that edge doesn't set up on us. So that's pretty much it. Like I said, I mean, we can come back and hit some of these spots that are a little too wet, but all in all, this looks really good. Come close, you can see like these rough spots where it's kind of tearing. Before that dries, you can just kind of rub that in and it's gonna make them not look as noticeable. Like right here, we got like some tears and stuff. If I just rub that down, you're not gonna see that. If it's too wet, it'll just kind of gum up. Like this spot's still a little wet, still we wait on that. Um, yeah, just anywhere you want, you can kind of go through and rub stuff off, and then in about, here's another one. Like here's a couple. Can you see that? Just kind of rub that in. Gets rid of those marks, kind of makes it blend in with the wall. Um, and then we'll wait about 10 minutes, we'll hit, we'll, we'll rub these edges in and make those look really good. Okay, so it's been about 10 minutes. This is starting to set up. Um, if you get close, you can kind of see 
some rough edges. I'm just gonna put a glove on and just rub those down, smooth them out. So you can really mold these corners and make them look really good. If it's still too wet, it'll just start to kind of tear. You just wanna let it sit a little longer. So we can really rub those down. Some of this might need a little more product. I'm not sure the guy that coated these did a good job. So I might have to hit those a little more. Like up here, this is still a little wet. I'll just flatten this off. And then when that sets up a little more, I can, I can really mold it. Yeah, we'll let that set up a little and then we'll rub those corners in like I showed you. And these edges will look really good. Okay, we're getting ready to seal it. If you guys want to leave this more of an industrial look, you don't have to seal it. The only issue is this can stain with stuff, right? Like if a kid writes a marker on it or something, it's going to be hard to get it off. You'd have to sand it off versus if it's sealed, you just wipe it right off. So if you want this like dry look, which is really cool, you just leave it like that. Don't seal it. But we're gonna seal this with our matte urethane, which is gonna give it a dull look. It will darken it up just a little bit. Um, and then if you have any spots that are like sticking out or anything, you can just take a scraper and just scrape it flat. We don't really have any, but we we'll just scrape any like stuff that's sticking out, any little chunky stuff like that, or you can lightly sand it. So pretty simple. Justin's gonna cut in all the corners because my roller's not gonna get in there. And then once he gets, you know, out here a little bit, I'll start rolling and I'll go wall to wall. So this is again our matte urethane, super slow sheen. We absolutely love it. Okay, so I'm just gonna roll wall to wall. We're gonna start down a little bit. You never wanna dip it and start right at the top or the bottom. I don't know why I haven't moved that water jug, but this is our last step, so it doesn't really matter now. So the whole, the whole point of this is just to roll it out thin quickly, because it does dry quick, the uh, overlay soaks the moisture out of this, so. And then we want to just do kind of like a light back roll. Another light back roll. We just don't want any thick edges. And then Justin will continue the top there, because I'll catch up to him real quick. Get it started in the middle every time. Make sure you hold the back. Roll it out really good. And it goes on white, which is cool because it shows you where you applied it. And this will all dry clear. So once I got it rolled out really good, I do my final back roll. And I'm not applying any pressure, I'm just being really light. You just don't want the guy that's doing the walls to get too far ahead of you because this will start to dry out and then it'll basically be by like put two coats in that spot. So with one dip I get like a little over a roller width. I'm able to coat before it puts it on too thin. You notice I'm keeping a straight line. I'm not, you know, I'm not just rolling this everywhere. I've got a straight line going everywhere. 
That's going to keep my thickness more consistent. And it just makes it easier to roll out. The reason I roll it so many times is because it's a porous surface. But we want to make sure we get everything coated. Okay, so the whole trick of this is we don't, we don't want really thick spots, like up here it's borderline a little too thick in some spots. If this, if this goes on too thick, it runs a chance of it uh, staying like a, a milky white color, not going clear. So just be cautious of that when you're, when you're rolling it out. Make sure you got it thin, no big puddles anywhere. Like if you have some puddles in the corner here, we would want, we would want to thin that out. That's pretty much it. That's how you roll on the, the matte urethane. All right, so we're gonna do a second coat of the matte urethane. You don't have to do two coats, we just wanna make this like permanently right. So we're gonna do one more coat since it's in one of our offices. Um, and since I went up and down vertical, I'm gonna go horizontal this time. So I'll obviously have to get on a ladder, roll horizontal. Uh, it, it, it's gonna go a lot faster and easier now that this is kind of sealed from that first coat. So we're just dipping the paintbrush in the top coat and just kind of brushing it on here. That way I don't have to stand up there and do these edges. And then I'll have Alex finish that out and then I'll start rolling the top. So everything's pretty much been coated. We'll show you guys when this is all dry tomorrow.